Hey, it's Wally Adamchek, president of the Firestarter Speaking and Consulting. How's it going? That's a little scary, a little close, but uh, wanted to get the video going here and talk about some really cool stuff today. Uh, I know that you have been bombarded with um, um, COVID, you know, work from home kind of uh, videos and all that. But in the next uh, 10 minutes or so, I'm gonna talk specifically about DISC and you and your personality, but how do you get in touch with me these days? And first of all, uh, I'm on LinkedIn regularly posting, would love to follow, uh, connect with you there. Doing a lot of posting on YouTube and uh, would love to have you follow me there. Go ahead, go to the YouTube site and subscribe and you'll see more of these videos coming out. This is where another place where this is gonna be. Some of that drives to Facebook and Twitter. Obviously, there's my contact information, the website. But perhaps most important for this session right now is lindsay at beafirestarter.com. Because I'm gonna start talking about your disc profile and I don't know if you remember what you are. I sincerely hope you do, but for some of you, it's been a long time. So let's dive in. We're talking about disc from home. And what we mean by that, and I don't know what your home looks like, is that many of us are working remotely now um, or we are on job sites and we're working with people who are working remotely. And um, it's weird, it's different. It's, 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 it, it, and because there's uncertainty and anxiety, we sometimes draw back into our core personalities and maybe not doing the things we know we're supposed to be doing from a better communications perspective. So this session right here is gonna talk specifically about the DISC module and how you can apply the DISC to help you communicate more effectively in the virtual environment. Well, I, and by the way, I, I, I took a look on, uh, online and there were 4.39 million hits uh, over the last 30 days on, on working from home. This is the, you can't swing a dead cat and not get a free webinar on working from home during the coronavirus. This is not that, okay? You already know that you're supposed to over communicate. You already know that you gotta deal with work life balance. You already gotta know, you already know you gotta take breaks and, um, and, and not go to work in your pajamas. And most of all, here's the simple rule communicate and get your stuff done. So we're not gonna go there, right? We're gonna go into the disc. And, uh, you know, this is the model. You remember the model, right? At the top of the model, uh, we have the D's and the I's, those big picture folks. The D's, obviously, direct, dominant, decisive. We see a lot of those in supervisory positions in construction. The I's are the influencers, the people, people, the, hey, buddy, how's it going kind of folks they're struggling right now. Um, the S's, of course, um, you can see there the uh, more stability, stable. They've got a people focus, but they also have a detail focus as well. And then the C's, you know, the, the high task orientation. Uh, always want to know why I'm not too concerned about your feelings, right? So that's a broad, big picture of the model. At this point, like I said, hopefully you've got your report. If you don't, Lindsay at BFIRestarter.com and she will get it to you. So let's dig a little bit deeper and take another perspective. This is a new slide that I'm using. You have not seen this slide if you've taken a disc class with me. And as you can see, there's ways we describe these, these axes, right? The, virtual, uh, the, the vertical axis, right? Where the D's obviously are about problems and challenges and the I's are about people and contacts. The S is about pace and consistency. And the C is about procedures and constraints. And obviously the higher you are up, you know, here we'll start to call high, the lower you are or low. At this point you become uh, praised for, admired for, recognized for, but also criticized for. Uh, up, down he, up here, you're gonna do it whether I beg you to or not. Um, down here at the bottom, you, you, you can, I can beg you to do it and you won't do it, right? So, um, you know, remember that core piece. And one of the things we've always tried to do is we talked about adaptability, right? That if I'm a high D, can I dial me down and, and get up to you, uh, uh, you know, wherever you are? And it was that analogy we talked about with radio frequencies. Um, you know, if I'm an FM transmitter and you're an AM receiver, you know, we got nothing. But if I'm an FM on 105 and you're an, a an FM on 95, we can dial and get to the same frequency. Same concept here, right? So, uh, taking it one step further, here's just another way of looking at the model, right? And the C's and the D's are all about task orientation. Uh, they tend to be very challenging, whereas the I's and the S's are uh, people-oriented and uh, tend to be cooperative, 
The D's and the I's, as we can see there, are relatively fast paced, uh, potentially extroverted, certainly the I's. Um, and, and we would make the assumption that D's are too, but I can correlate for you in the construction industry because we, you know, that's what the research that we do. Um, just about over half the D's are actually extroverted. So that would mean almost half the D's are introverted. So just because somebody is quiet and reserved then doesn't necessarily mean that they are going to be uh, an S or a C. It's definitely something you gotta um, get past as you're thinking about it. But keep these broad concepts in the back of your mind as we dive deeper now into the rest of the, um, the session here and we talk specifics about each one of these. So the high D, obviously that's that direct person. They're ambitious, they're forceful, decisive, independent, goal oriented, go, go, go. Remember the big thing with them is high sense of urgency. Don't waste their time. If you're gonna do video with them, plan it ahead. Don't just kind of pop in on FaceTime because they're not really interested in doing that stuff. Uh, and then confirm that they're available by text or email or some highly efficient method. Provide written correspondence with direct answers to questions and um, very concise bullet points. They don't want long dissertations on anything. So before the, 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 the phone call, or before the video call, um, very concise. This is what we're gonna talk about. After the call, very concise, bulleted. This is what we need to talk about. Uh, and then finally, they don't wanna get involved in a theoretical conversation about what could be or what might be. It's the facts and just the facts. And, um, if, and if you don't do that, you're gonna turn them off. Now, at least face to face, they may stay engaged for a little bit, but online, particularly if it's voice only, uh, on the phone or on, a, on an audio portion of a web call as opposed to the video, you could lose them really quickly. Now, on the bottom side of that spectrum, we have the low Ds, uh, people who are, tend to be cooperative and low key, certainly modest, mild would be another word to describe those. You can see that they're cooperative. You don't want to assert with these folks too much because they'll back off. So we're offering to uh, support, right? We're offering to be a sounding board for them. We're being cooperative. We're being helpful. Uh, we're not <clears throat> forcing ourselves on them the way we might with a D and then you might say, oh yeah, fine, take care of that. Uh, the low D, the reflective is going to need some time, not gonna be as big a fan uh, of you being too direct with them. Uh, similarly, uh, you got to give them some time to share their opinions. In fact, ask leading questions, ask open-ended questions. Uh, the D is going to tell you what they think, uh, whether you want to know or not. The low D, mm, maybe not. So we need to do what we can to draw them out. And as you can see, this low D is reflective. Uh, you know, uh, modest, et cetera, uh, don't pressure them into making difficult decisions on the spot because they will not. Now, it's not that they're not capable of making decisions. It's just that when put on the spot, this low D wants to process it, wants to think about it. Uh, and when you put them on the spot, it creates anxiety. They may give you an answer. They may not like the answer. Um, so just don't do it if they're a low D. All right, let's talk about our friends, the eyes, and they are everybody's friend, aren't they? They're outgoing, they're enthusiastic, friendly, demonstrative, con conservation, uh, conversational, etc. cetera. Uh, <laughs> simple with them, video, video, video. More video is better. You gotta remember one of the biggest fears for these folks is rejection. Uh, so this, uh, and, and social isolation, right? Not being able to connect. So this whole social distancing thing is driving these people absolutely crazy. So the ability and, and the option to go video is absolutely the best way to go with them. Uh, with that said, you probably got to allow a little bit of time and you got to, um, you know, keep the conversation on track because it's going to go different places and, you know, allow time for that. Now, when you're done with this phone call or this video call with your high, high, outgoing person here, you definitely have to follow up with action steps, dates, deadlines, etc. cetera. Um, if you're the high, high, you might want to do that to make sure that you've got accountability for yourself. Uh, if you're dealing with a high, high, you might want to get them to do that or you do it for them. Like, here's, I remember, here's what I remember out of the call. But you, you get the point. 
right? You know, the high eyes tend to wander, very theoretical, lots of ideas, never met a friend they didn't make, like, and this is about being real specific with them. So that's what that second bullet point here is for. And then you see, don't be too formal with these folks, right? Um, there's a, we, we do lose some nonverbals here, uh, definitely online, but um, the relation things, relationship still matters. They are gonna wander for you. So, you know, facts, et cetera, are good things, but don't overdo it because you're gonna turn them off. Now, again, if you're a high C having that conversation, that's what you're going to bring to them and uh, might be creating a little bit of disconnect as we go through it. Now, talking to the low eye, this is that reserved, restrained, very reflective person. Um, for them, you have to have a clear plan for virtual collaboration. What is this going to look like? Who is going to do what, when, and uh, what? Wh all the things associated with that. That's so they have clarity in the process. If they are this reserved, uh, restrained kind of person, uh, process is very important to them. So what is the process that we're going to follow? The high eye could care less about process, so we probably need to put that on them too, uh, as we talked about in the second bullet in the previous slide. But here, this is just about helping people understand how we're gonna go through this together. Stick to the specifics. Um, if you go off script with one of the low eyes here, uh, once again, I wasn't prepared for that, creates anxiety, the conversation do doesn't go as well. And if you're in a group meeting, uh, just as in a uh, live meeting, if someone is a low eye, they do not want to be called on. They do not want to be singled out. They're probably an introvert. The high eyes, extroverts, they're looking for the opportunity. They're going to speak out even if you tell them to be quiet. The low eyes, you might want to tell them ahead of time, I'm going to call on you, or I really want you to speak out in the meeting. But if you call on them, just like in a live meeting, you're going to get this long pause that they then hope you will fill or somebody else will fill because they don't want to speak uh, on the spot. Okay, my high S's. Once again, a relaxed personality, patient, predictable, reliable. They fear change. They're very comfortable in established routines. Those are this entire COVID thing is not an established routine. A moment ago, I missed the D. I didn't tell you their fear. Their fear is not being in charge and being in control. Once again, how can I be in control when the thing is entirely new? So the D is getting pressured, you know, internally because they're not in control because of this unique situation we're in. The I, the social disconnection, this, the S is, um, uh, it's change and they're not comfortable with change quickly and this has just been thrust upon them. So, uh, but you, you got to get them to think, you got to get them to uh, emote, you got to get them to verbalize and that's what this one is about. Ask open-ended questions to draw out their uh, responses um, and it says via email or written chat but because they're more comfortable in that formal environment and then you can move to the visual environment um, allow them time and space to think before uh, answering right you got to give them time to think they're introverts highly likely which means they think to speak unlike an extrovert which is certainly a high eye and half of our D's who speak to think the phrase speaking out loud or thinking out loud uh, applies to the I's for sure and half the D's. It does not apply to these S's right here. They are going to think to speak and you got to give them time to do that. Now again, online, virtually, that might even seem to be longer than it really is when we're in the same room together. And again, don't put them on the spot. Like the low I, uh, this person is not going to like uh, that situation. They're not going to be the first person to respond in the meeting. Um, and uh, you're going to create anxiety when you call on them uh, if you do. Flip side, my low S's, right? They tend to be fast moving, tend to be active, flexible. They could be a D, they could be an I. I don't know for sure, but I know in this case they're a low S. And um, so, you know, they're, they're going to think out loud, right? Just like the, the high S is like, to think, speak, these folks are going to think out loud. They're going to speak to think uh, and just may let it happen. 
Now, if you're on one of those Zoom calls where you got, you know, it's the Hollywood Squares thing where you got a whole bunch of faces talking or, or teams or go to meeting, you know, all the screens are there and all the people are there. You got to figure out a way to manage this, right? Because one person is going to take over the, con the entire uh, Zoom call just like they do take over a meeting. Now, face to face, it's a lot easier to kind of give them the you know, tap the brakes or the call on somebody else. Uh, that's a lot harder to do in the virtual environment. So it's something you want to think about so that your entire team is getting heard and feeling valued and not starting to get pissed off by that guy who can't shut up. Uh, and, and don't make decisions on their behalf, right? This, this dynamic, eager, fast-moving person wants to make their own decisions, wants to be part of the solution. Um, so, you know, let them, let them verbalize, let them get through it, let them think, and, uh, and we'll get to a solution there eventually. All right, my high C's, uh, compliant, and you can see dependent, neat, conservative, highly task-oriented, uh, highly detail-oriented. Uh, their fear is, is being wrong or being inaccurate. Well, my gosh, what, what does that look like in these days? I mean, this is a totally new scenario, people performing in a totally new environment. That creates a lot of anxiety for this person as well because they don't have the certainty that the results are going to be the same or the context of it are all going to be the same. So um, when you're dealing with a high C, you have got to be organized. You have got to be objective. This is about facts and figures and details. And if you start giving the I thinks and it's my opinions, you're going to lose them. Um, communicate with messages that focus on the facts, not the emotion. Just building on what I just said. Uh, that's even more important in this environment. And, and don't be vague about expectations and accountabilities. For the high C, I talk about build the box. And I don't mean that in a negative way to constrain them, but build the box, tell them all the things that are in the box, and they will fill the box to their maximum, maximum ability. Build a big box, that's fine. But you gotta tell them what their roles or responsibilities are. Job descriptions matter to high C's expectations in this new online environment matter to these high C's. If we don't give it to them, not, not that they're lazy or slackers, but they'll kind of sit back and go, well, I, I, I'm not quite sure whose that is, but I don't think it's mine, therefore I'm not gonna do it. Uh, now, but if you tell me to do it, I'll do it, and I'll do it 100% correctly. And then finally, my uh, low C's, the pioneering person, you know, uninhibited, open-minded, independent, unconventional. This could be a D, it could be an I, but all we're talking about is somebody who is a low C right here. Um, if, if they're a low C, you gotta recognize that they're gonna wander a little bit. We may get into some creative conversations that you're like, where the hell did that come from? But you cannot leave a meeting without having summarized what you're talking about, right? And what the action steps are coming out of it because they may not have remembered them or they didn't know what the objective of the meeting was or whatever the case may be. So we need clarity on expectations and accountability coming out of that meeting. And then finally, as we begin to wrap this conversation up, DISC doesn't explain everything. Uh, there's Myers-Briggs, there's, there's emotional intelligence, there's, uh, oh God, there's an alphabet soup out there these days of assessments. And just like when you go to the doctor and uh, we say, well, what, what test are they going to do with the doctor to determine if you're healthy? Well, they might do blood pressure. Okay, they'll do blood pressure. Oh, they might do eyes and ears. Okay, cardiology, you know, uh, blood, urine, et cetera. In other words, there is no one medical test to help understand you and describe you and how you are the way you are. Similarly, there's no one psychometric to help you understand all about you. The DISC is a great tool. You are more complex than just the DISC, so let's not oversimplify it. But as we have drawn back into our homes and into our bunkers and our social isolation, what is definite is that your high points have become higher and your low points have become lower on your graph because we're in a situation of an anxiety, and uncertainty and that self-awareness that you might have had uh, is, is challenged in this environment, right? So our goal for today coming together is to re-expand that self-awareness as it relates to this. Like I said, you may not be uh, working remote, you may be on a job site right now, but there's a high likelihood a project manager or a project engineer who you would have seen on a more regular basis is working remotely. So 
Um, and if you are re working remotely, understand this, right? There's good data in here, not some generic uh, COVID response, like I said. So I'm here for you, totally here for you. Uh, obviously, we're sending you th this to you on email, but it's going to be up on YouTube as well. Would love for you to subscribe. Would love for you to follow. You know, there's the contact information, of course. Uh, I can't play golf every day, uh, so give me a call. Send me an email. Let's play, uh, um, uh, hey, what would you do? How would you do? I've got a guy. 100% here for you. I love having those conversations. Anyway, it's Wally Adams at Firestarter Speed and Consulting. I, I'm glad we could spend this time together. I look forward to doing it again. Let me wrap this up and we'll have a great day.